In today's show, we're looking ahead to Tuesday in the NBA. What we're watching for, streaming options, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble, on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball and on Substack, Josh Lloyd 48 at Substack or dot Substack dot com. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. There's only three games on Tuesday, so streaming is vitally important. I'm going to institute, introduce, introduce a uh, a new segment on this uh, streaming show as well, which gives us a bit of an idea of um, looking ahead maybe multiple days instead of just for one day or for back-to-backs or, or things like that. So stay tuned. We'll see how it goes. We're always looking to tweak and change things on this show. So warning, as I push the wrong button, try again, warning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right, the Knicks and the Pistons is the first game up. The Knicks are four-point favorites. The total is 224 and a half points. We know that the uh, the sly hog himself, Cade Cunningham. My name is Richie Cunningham. He is out. But then there's a bunch of questionable players. And since I created this graphic, another one has entered the questionable player list. Jaden Ivey, Boyan Bogdanovich, the Flame of Galar, Isaiah Stewart, and now Marvin Bagley is on there with a migraine. So Ivy with a knee problem, he's missed two straight. Bogdanovich missed Sunday's game. Stewart's missed two weeks or so with that toe fracture. And now Bagley with the migraine issue. Bagley has played really well the last couple of games. We'll talk about the Pistons in a second. Let's let's go to the Knicks now. I want to see Isaiah Hartenstein. I I do believe he's a drop because A, the Tom Thibodeau system's not working for him. Although, before Mitchell Robinson got hurt, Hartenstein was great. He was a top 100 player. Now, there is uh, the report of his Achilles flaring up or his heel or calf, whatever it is, flaring up, and that's impacting him. They went back to at least a two-center rotation. So Lionheart Jericho Sims was back out of the rotation. And we always want to watch what Hartenstein does because if he plays 22 minutes, yeah, there's a top 100 potential player there. But yeah, it's not happening. So move on. I also want to watch Cam Reddish. Emmanuel Quickly is officially questionable for this team after leaving last game uh, early. Reddish came off the bench behind Grimes. He played about the same minutes as Grimes. If Quickly does go, now Quickly only played nine minutes last game. So are those nine minutes, will they go all to Grimes? Will they go all to Reddish? Will they go to Derek Rose? How that runs, I think Reddish is a streamer for steals, but on a volume day like this, both him and Grimes, I'd prefer Reddish over Grimes. They do become options. And let's just see how Tom Thibodeau uses them. For the Pistons, as I said, Bagley's been playing well. Now, some of that is to do with the free throws are going in, but also the fact that he's getting more usage with three starters out, Ivy Bogdanovich and Stewart. But now Bagley is also questionable. So is this an opportunity, finally, for Jalen Duran to start? They might have no choice. Now, if Bagley is out, but Stewart plays, I think they'll start Stewart and then start Bay at the four. But if both Bagley and Stewart are out, I think Duran will start. Although I got, I, can, I cannot, I don't know what's going to happen to me if they start Nerlens Noel. But I think Duran would start and Noel would be the backup. But there are different situations or different things that old mate Dwayne Casey can go through there. But it is an opportunity, I think, for Duran to get that start if Bagley and Stewart are out. Hopefully, if it's just, I'd like to see the Stewart Duran pairing. But I do fear that he would start Stewart at the five and bring Bay back at the four to start there. I also want to watch Killian Hayes, whose last couple of games have been really good. There is going to be iffiness with his scoring and his shooting, but assists are pretty strong. Solid rebounder, gets good steals. The minutes are pretty secure, I think. I do believe he is a 12-team league guy, more so for categories than for points. I don't think he's a must in points, but the role is there, the minutes are there, and you, you want to use him on a day like this with only three games on. Like There's even points lead value in using Killian Hayes in one of these circumstances, but the three or the four big questionable ones for the, the Pistons, Ivy, Bogdanovich, Stewart, and Bagley, they have a wide-ranging impact. Like, if Ivy misses, then they'll start Roddy Magruder again, which is disgusting, but they will. So it boosts Hamadou Diallo. It boosts Alec Burks. It boosts Isaiah Livers. It boosts Kevin Knox. 
It boosts Nerlens Noel. It boosts Jalen Duran. Like so many guys can get bumps here that we really would love to get some information on what they're actually deciding they're going to run or who's actually going to be out there and what we can do with it. Today's episode is brought to you by Turo. Yes, by Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the US, the UK, Canada, and now in Australia. Book a spacious SUV or minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, a birthday, or a holiday. Get an economy car. Affordable if you're on a budget and you just need to get from A to B or test drive that electric vehicle you've been looking at and see how it fits in your everyday life. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. That's T-U-R-O.com. Okay, I realized that I didn't change the screen over. You should have been looking at my full face there. Al Josh. Anyway, let's go back to Warriors Mavs. That is the next game. I don't know why I even bothered to do that little change over there, but I did. Warriors Mavs. The Mavs are one point favorites. The total is 226 and a half. At this point, there are no injuries apart from whatever foolishness is going on with Andre Iguodala. No injuries for either team. Not even a questionable status for either team. Um, that's, that's, that's fantastic news. So, what do we want to watch? On the Warriors side of things, Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, last two games off the bench, they've tweaked the rotations a little bit, and he's been better. So, is that something that sticks? Let's bloody hope so. Like, he's running not as the main creator. He's playing more with Draymond Green, and it's helping him. So, the buy low window might be open a little bit here for Poole, but I reckon it's closing pretty quickly. I still don't think he gets to top 60, but it is closing. Also, it's Clay Thompson, who has played better as well. The shooting is improving. I still don't. I think he's probably a sell high based on name value, and I don't think he's a top 50 player. But things, after looking dire for the first 15 games, have really started to turn around for Clay. So let's see. Have these guys figured it out? Is it a scheme thing? Is it just a hot streak for both players? Yeah, how does this look for them? But the Mavericks, well, we talked about it on the injury show earlier today. They signed Kemba Walker. Hello. Is he going to play? And what's he going to play? I imagine it'd be pretty low minutes early on. But is he a part of this rotation? I, 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 don't, I don't really know where, where he fits. Like, I, I do know where he fits, but he's going to replace Campazzo's minutes, which were zero. So who else's minutes does he take away from? Josh Green, Tim Hardaway? You, you would think that there's, you know, those guys are going to lose some playing time. But how much? Like They were playing 20 minutes a night. Really, like, is one of them out of the rotation entirely to get Kemba in? I think that's possible. But I also, I don't know whether Kemba's even going to play this first game. I think he's going to sit back-to-backs. Um, and I don't obviously think he's a 12-team league player. There is a role, though. There is a potential role as a ball handler who's not named Luca or Dinwiddie to, to get some minutes. But where you find those minutes is going to be the big question to me. Like, there are obviously spuds they can cut in Bullock and Hardaway and even Green, but do they? And how much do they cut them and what does Walker's role looks like? look like? Is this the game that Christian Wood starts? Now, big men going up against the Warriors is often something where they, they get cooked and his defense is disgusting. So, even though I do think that he's going to start really soon and he started last game in the second half, it's a shit-ass matchup. Like, it's a really bad matchup for Christian Wood. And I worry that if they do put him in and start him here, that he gets cooked and plays 25 minutes. I, I worry about that. And that's something we pay attention to. So if it does happen and we start, he, he gets started, and then we celebrate, and then he ends up with 24 minutes, I think that's Warriors-related rather than Jason Kidd's a bad coach. Although he is. Jason Kidd's a bad coach. Someone said, man, how can you say Jason Kidd's a bad coach? He took him to the conference finals last season. I mean, he, he he was pretty good last season, but he's had a pattern of this. Takes over in Brooklyn, good first season. Teams figure him out. Players tune him out. The dumb decisions catch up to him. First season in Milwaukee, pretty solid. Dreadful. Literally the worst coach in the league after that. I'm not saying he's the worst coach in the league now because he's not, but he definitely surprised me last season. But the same pattern, second year Jason Kidd, things start to go wrong. He makes terrible decisions. He harbors bias against players that he probably shouldn't. And, I, and I'm not a massive Christian Wood fan, but he just lies about stuff. And yeah, that, that could be an issue here. So just, just I'm not saying that he's the worst coach in the NBA, Jason Kidd. I'm saying that 
it often happens he gets that single season initial boost and then things fall away. So we really want to watch to see how that works. But this is all going to tie into what Christian Wood's minutes and role looks like in this situation because that, of course, is the big question mark. Today's episode is also brought to you by LinkedIn. You want to hire? It's it's a tough thing, right? Because it takes time, it takes money. If you get it wrong, well, it can really set you back. It's one of those things that you need to be 100% certain of so you get the best qualified candidates. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. How easy is it to create a job? Super easy. You go in there, you create that job, it doesn't take that long. And then you go in onto your LinkedIn profile, you add the purple hashtag hiring frame and that lets all your contacts know that you are indeed hiring. So, Simple tools like the screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rank LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the quality candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Last game of the day. Clippers and the Blazers. The Blazers are two-point favorites. The total's 217 here. Um, out, look at the names. Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Damian Lillard, Luke Kennard, Gary Payton. These are all obviously three superstars and two really valuable rotation players. Keon Johnson's also questionable, but yeah, there, there's some big names out here and it does open up value for a lot of players. So on the Clippers side of things, we saw last game, Ivan Zubats drop that 29 and 31 game or 31 and 29 game. Obviously ridiculous game. Is he going to do that again? Yeah, absolutely not. But he's been really solid. But prior to this, yeah, the last week he was like 130th ranked player and then he jumped up because of this gigantic game. So don't overreact rate what he does, but we want to see what he does. How does he, what does he do for an uncle? What does Ty Lu do in terms of minutes for Zubats who'd played 29 and 26 the two previous games before that big game against the Pacers? We also want to watch Johnny Wall who still can't really play big minutes. 22, 24, 21, 22, 24, 13. Sort of where he's stuck, isn't it? I don't think he's a must roster player. The assists are really useful though. But be aware that if you are rostering him and streaming him for this game, you're going to get either a big hit in field goals, a hit in free throws, a hit in both, low volume threes. Like he can help in certain areas, but he also can be pretty negative in turnovers, field goals, and free throws. Yeah, it's the Russell Westbrook. Like he can do that. And that, that's an issue. So we want to see how he gets used. And then uh, in conjunction with that, what that means for Reggie Jackson, who struggled last game, um, Norman Powell, what it means for Amir Coffey, what it means for Nick Batum, what it means for Terrence Mann, as their team continues to be just a mess of a rotation. In Portland, Justice Winslow, he's not for everyone. He's going to have, much like Wall, some bad percentage nights. But he can be a rebounds guy, he can be an assist guy, he can be a steals guy, and he can sneakily be a blocks player. And we'll talk about this a little bit later on. There is a lot of value in getting a Blazers player at this point and having them for the week. With Lillard out, he's getting big minutes. 42 and 37 the last two games for Justice Winslow. That's enough to rack up some counting sets, but of course you have to be cautious. This is not a long-term thing for Winslow. It's not at all. It's while Lillard is out, you get some value in those categories, but it's not for everybody and it doesn't have to be rostered. But given the way the schedule plays out, if you're looking to just rack up and pile up counting stats, then Justice can be useful for you. I also want to watch Yusuf Nurkic. No question about it. I am ready to get hurt again. Because we saw minutes for him low early in the season. Last two games, 34 and 34. Now, part of that is because of the absence of Lillard and, and they need a bit more of his playmaking. But also, Justice Winslow is getting back up center minutes and now he's playing like the two and the three. So he's not there to take those minutes. So they're playing more Nurkic. So the Lillard absence is helping uh, Nurkic in a couple of different ways, making maybe him a sell high, although I don't think anyone's going to do that. But we also just want to see whether that trend continues. The minutes continue to push up. He continues to be way more useful than he has been at other points during this season. That is something that we do need to pay attention to. The back-to-back here Wednesday or Tuesday, Wednesday. Again, Wednesday, there's not much going on there in terms of um, stream value because it is so high volume. But if you are in a position, these are the teams or the players that, that play on the Tuesday-Wednesday combination. You've got Winslow. Obviously, the Blazers have got that game. There's Terrence Mann and Amir Coffey. I'm expecting that both Kawhi and Paul George and even Luke Kennard miss both Tuesday-Wednesday. So Terrence Mann and Amir Coffey. You've got Drew Eubanks. They're in Portland as well if you want some blocks options. And then in New York, they have the back-to-back as well. So Quentin Grimes, Cam Reddish, Obert Toppin. Of course, Emmanuel Quickly would be an option if we knew he was going to play, but we do not know whether he is going to play. If we're streaming in just for Tuesday, um, category leagues, I like Kevon Looney, Justice Winslow, Terrence Mann, uh, Jalen Duran, whose value could really, really spike. Nico Batum, Drew Eubanks. 
Even Isaiah Hartenstein might be worth the stream. And uh, the Farmers Union himself, Amir Coffey. For deeper leagues, these guys are all available in over 90% of leagues. Winslow, Batum, Eubanks, Coffey. And then you've got Quentin Grimes, Muxy Kleber, who I think is going to push Dwight Powell out of the rotation entirely. Um, Cameron Reddish. And Dante DiVincenzo, who played really well last game for the Warriors. So maybe we want to watch a little bit more closely with him. For points leagues, we've got Justice Winslow, Kavon. These are all 50% or more available. Justice Winslow, Kavon Looney, Killian Hayes, Alec Burks. Both guys should be rostered. Dorian Finney-Smith, he should be rostered as well. Um, Terrence Mann, Jalen Duran, and Reggie Jackson. And this is something that I, I am instituting now. And we'll see whether it sticks or how we, we change it. But from hit Tuesday through to Sunday, so the rest of this week, who are some guys that are going to be useful for you that you might not really expect, given the fact that these guys play on the low volume day? So I'm exclu- these are, I'm really looking at who plays Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Who has the most value that you might be able to add at this point and get some prolonged games out of them? Does this help? Is this helpful? I hope it is because again, I'm going to try and look at more like your chunks of games, four to five days. Yeah, what can we do short term sort of ads? And I am going to work on this a little bit, but this is something I'm just trying now. So for the rest of the week. And we're looking at guys on low volume days. Like Justice Winslow. He's got three low volume day games left this week, starting Tuesday. Dorian Finney Smith, three games, low volume days. These are great ads for the rest of this week. Alec Burks, like these are not exciting names. Alec Burke. But there's enough value because you can use them three times. And if Burks plays 25 minutes, it's 75 minutes worth of action. If Winslow plays 35 minutes, well, that's a lot. That's over 100 minutes. If Dorian Finney Smith plays 36 minutes, that's over 100 minutes worth of action versus adding someone and they play on a Wednesday and you sit them on the bench. Drew Eubanks has the three games as well the rest of the week on low volume days. Kavon Looney, he's only got two games, but he's useful enough. Isaiah Hartenstein's got three low volume days. Jalen Duran's got three and he might start one of them. Cameron Reddish has got three as well for the rest of this week. So obviously some very interesting guys that if we add them, we're getting good games out of them. Again, I'm going to try and adjust this and, and tweak it and get more info, but I hope that was useful for you. If it was, hit a thumbs up on this video. Leave your comments down below, but you can also find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey. And if you're on YouTube, you thumb it up, you leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.